Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're talking about the 2020 NBA Draft and the fact that it's about to get really weird for this draft class. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA then consider subscribing, I upload every single day. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have noticed, some of you have, I haven't really done much draft content this year, certainly not as much as I normally do. And I've had some people in the comment section asking for draft content, whether it be on a specific player or just a mock draft overall. And obviously maybe once we get you know closer to the off season, and that stuff typically ramps up for me. But um, this is just a really weird draft class and it's only been made weirder as a situation by the league now being suspended. So everybody's kind of known that this draft class, at least compared to the 2019 class and then the upcoming 2021 class, presumably, is just not going to be very good by comparison, at least in terms of immediate impact players. It happens all the time. The draft is typically a very cyclical thing, and this is just gonna be a down year in terms of overall talent in the draft. There's some talented players for sure, but this is definitely a down year. So it was already gonna be kind of weird. We had you know, the, the Warrior situation where they're suddenly gonna be at the top of the draft order, even though if, even if they never made this pick, they're gonna be one of the better teams in the West next year, assuming that everybody stays healthy. So it, it was already a weird situation, right? Limited talent. But then once the league got suspended, it already it, it just added to what was already a really weird situation right because now you have even less film and and less time to evaluate these prospects if you're an nba front office and you're looking at these prospects and thinking okay you know i like what i've seen out of the first 29 games from these guys but i want to see the conference tournament i want to see the NCAA tournament i want to see how these guys perform under pressure and then uh, internationally there's some postseasons that were never played either so that's going to further limit you know the film and the evaluation level you can go to on these guys especially for one and done college freshmen right and there's a lot of them at the top of this class as there are every single year and you go from you know only seeing 35 college games of a player which is not a lot to now going to even even less you know 25 to 29 games assuming that they played in every single game this season and didn't get hurt which isn't the case for guys like cole anthony near the top of the class but it's not just that because now that the league is suspended time that was typically spent on traveling around and seeing these guys in person and and, and scheduling workouts and, and potentially having an nba draft combine all of those things are hindered at the moment as well and suspended. There's no travel, there's no nothing, and you're just sitting around watching film, and that leads to more of a guessing game with this particular draft class than we've ever really had just because of the circumstances. And it's not just that, it's not just the front office side, but for the players, it's really tough to get feedback on whether they should enter the draft or not. And there's been a system implemented over the last couple of seasons in which a player can kind of test the waters and find out, you know, where they might be selected and then choose to come back to school or not. But, you know, those those evaluations and, and the the ability for those players to get true feedback, that's been limited as well by the suspension. So even at this point, players that you would typically think, you know, when the season was over, you'd know pretty quickly if they were going to be in the draft or not. You don't know right now. And that's another big issue for these teams that are potentially scouting players like Cole Anthony, who has not officially declared for the draft at this point, trying to figure out whether it's even worth their time to put into, you know, scouting him whenever things do resume or prior to them, you know, being suspended. So it's a very weird situation overall. But then as you move on to, to the context to some of these teams at the top of the class, it adds even more to this indecisiveness and not really knowing what's gonna happen, right? For example, right now the Golden State Warriors would be at the top assuming that the lottery just went the way that it's supposed to. Of course, it's not going to, but in terms of the standings, in terms of the records, the Warriors would have the, the, the top pick, right? But they don't necessarily need the guy that's the consensus number one overall pick at the moment, at least. Again, prior to all these workouts and, and combine events and things like that, that typically help about help these guys evaluate these prospects. Right now, Anthony Edwards seems to be the consensus top pick, who's kind of a combo two three perimeter player that the Warriors don't necessarily need. If you're just looking at their starting lineup, they've got Steph, they've got Clay, they've got Wiggins, they've got Draymond, and then there's kind of a hole at the five spot, which is never really a position that they've prioritized a ton in Golden State throughout this run. But if you're looking at the one position that needs to be upgraded more than any, assuming that you know you think that Andrew Wiggins is gonna be a starting caliber three, then the five spot is, is the one that they need to upgrade, right? The problem is the consensus, you know, best big guy in the class for most of the year, James Wiseman, has been sliding down draft board and mock drafts to the point where he doesn't seem like he's going to be the pick at number one overall anymore and that creates this weird situation where the warriors are thinking okay 
This pick is really critical to us moving forward in terms of this era, as well as the next era of Warriors basketball. So we wanna make sure that we get it right. And we wanna make sure that we're bringing in a player that fits now as well as in the future. And does Anthony Edwards really fit that mold? And if that's not the case, and you wanna make sure you're getting good value, does that bring in the possibility of potentially trading down in the draft or trading this pick in general as a whole, just trading away the first overall pick or whatever pick they get, which has been rumored in the past to get some other player to add to this core, whether it's Bradley Beal or Joel Embiid or whoever, I'm not saying these guys are available. I'm just, you know, throwing names out here, right? And that creates a ton of uncertainty at the top of the draft, but it's not just the Warriors. As you move further along in the draft order, teams like the Atlanta Hawks that look like they're gonna have somewhere around a top five pick, they already have a ton of young guys on their roster and they're just kind of waiting on them to develop. Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter, Trey Young, John Collins, they've already essentially got an entire starting five of good young players, it looks like. And so who they're gonna add to that mix is gonna be really interesting. Maybe they do add Wiseman, who's a more traditional five than John Collins to potentially look to move on from him. Maybe they pick another backcourt player because they don't think Kevin Herter or Cam Reddish or DeAndre Hunter, one of those guys is gonna be as good as they thought, right? But again, it just adds this level of uncertainty to where you're like, okay, well, maybe the Hawks are gonna consider trading away this pick for a more proven player to kind of accelerate their timeline. And that adds into this discussion of like, okay, well, how much value do these first round picks have compared to other years? Because typically if you're trading away a top five pick, like that's a really, really valuable asset. But in this particular class, is that gonna be enough to really get you something as significant as you would hope, especially in comparison to like 2019 and 2020, one, 2021 first round picks. So it, it, it's, it's such a weird situation, right? Where there's so much uncertainty around everything in the NBA and in, in sports in general but specifically this draft class. And I don't know who's gonna end up suffering and who's gonna end up potentially benefiting from this situation. All I know is that it's it's very weird and it's very strange to have a player that is presumably the consensus top pick in Anthony Edwards, but it's it's not necessarily you know set in stone and situationally things could change. Once you see guys in workouts, maybe James Wiseman is just incredible in workouts and the Warriors pick him first overall. Then you've got all this uncertainty in terms of the first pick if the Warriors do get it, potentially trading it away or other teams like the Hawks potentially trading their pick away. Not to mention, we have no idea what the order is right now because of, of uh, you know the lottery and is the lottery gonna be postponed? Is the combine gonna be postponed? Is the draft gonna be postponed? If we're playing games in September, is the draft gonna be you know, when is, when are all of these things going to happen? Right. And it's just, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up becoming one of the most disappointing. I mean, I guess disappointing isn't the right word because that's relative to expectations. Right. But one of the most, uh, lackluster draft classes in terms of first year impact in league history, because it's a class that's not overly talented. It's a class that's coming into a situation that. Um, you know, might not be ideal for their skill set, whether, you know, for whatever teams at the top of the class, but then whatever training camp, whatever workouts they get before the year starts is going to be very, very consolidated, assuming that we're playing games into September and then the draft at some point, and then, you know, the, the, the year starts in, in December or something, everything is just going to be off. And there's going to be a shortened timeline in the off season for all the players, but especially for the rookies that are trying to make this transition. It's going to be such an interesting thing to watch and to pay attention to. Uh, and like, I have high hopes for some players in this class. I do think that there's good players, but when we look back on this 10 years from now, I think we're going to see a class that has maybe one or two really high impact players. And apart from that, a class that just came in at the wrong time. And as a result of that, maybe, maybe we see some players stay in school that wouldn't otherwise, because they want to, you know, come into the league when they have a full offseason season prepare. But on the, the, the flip side of that, that 2021 class looks already to be so stacked that maybe you're giving up millions of dollars in draft position by coming back and, and, and you know, playing another year in college and then coming back in 2021. So it's going to be really strange. It's going to be really interesting. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, nor does really anybody else. But this 2020 NBA draft is going to be, I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a hyperbole to say that it is going to be unprecedented in terms of a potentially very, very limited impact on the following NBA season, but also the circumstances in which these players are going to be coming into the NBA. And yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.